Earth was on the brink of annihilation at the hands of the galaxy-conquering Vulcan Empire. Humanity's fleets lay in ruins, cities burned, and surrender seemed inevitable as the Vulcan Armada loomed in orbit poised to strike. But in Earth's darkest hour, a glimmer of hope emerged from the most unlikely place. Deep beneath the New Zealand mountains, in a hidden research facility, human scientist Dr. Craig Hicks and his team worked frantically to decode an ancient alien artifact recovered from the sands of Mars. This metallic dodecahedron, covered in strange, undeciphered runes, was their last desperate hope to save Earth from the Vulcan's wrath. As orbital bombardment shook the facility and Hicks's colleagues fell into despair, the determined scientist refused to give up. He worked tirelessly, racing against time while Earth's defenses crumbled above. With Vulcan forces breaching the atmosphere and all seeming lost, Hicks's persistence finally paid off as he cracked the artifact's secrets. Hicks activated the dodecahedron, not knowing what to expect. To everyone's shock, the device emitted a quantum pulse that resonated with identical artifacts across the galaxy. Disbelief turned to awe as an ancient network of traversable wormholes sprang to life, linking Earth with thousands of uncharted star systems. In an instant, humanity's doom transformed into its salvation. The wormholes offered escape to the stars and access to the technological wonders of a hyper-advanced precursor civilization. But the Vulcans would not let this opportunity slip away. As quickly as hope dawned, a new race began. To explore the portal network, uncover the precursor's power, and decide the fate of the galaxy itself. The first human expedition, led boldly by Dr. Hicks himself, would be the opening salvo in this ultimate battle for survival and freedom. As Dr. Hicks and his team ventured deeper into the alien megastructure, their hearts raced with anticipation and trepidation. The corridors, illuminated by an eerie bluish glow, led them to a cavernous chamber filled with towering data banks and holographic displays. Hicks approached the central console, his fingers trembling as he activated the ancient interface. Streams of data flowed across the screens, coalescing into schematics and diagrams that left the team awestruck. Weapon systems capable of harnessing the power of stars, force fields that could withstand the fury of supernova, and propulsion technologies that defied the very laws of physics, all laid bare before their eyes. My God, whispered Dr. Samantha Chen, Hicks's second in command. With this knowledge, we could change the course of human history. We could stand against the Vulcans as equals. Hicks nodded solemnly. The architects left us an incredible gift but we must use it wisely. This technology could just as easily destroy us as save us. As the team downloaded the schematics, Hicks couldn't shake the feeling that they were standing on the precipice of something monumental. He christened the vanished civilization, the architects, and silently vowed to unravel the mysteries of their portal network, despite the toll. Back on Earth, the brilliant Dr. Liam Novak worked feverishly to unlock the secrets of the portal activation artifact. Sequestered in a high-security lab, Novak and his team pored over the dodecahedron's quantum circuitry, trying to replicate its resonant signal. Days turned into weeks as they toiled, fueled by a potent mix of willpower and desperation. The fate of humanity rested on their shoulders, and failure was not an option. Finally, after countless sleepless nights and failed simulations, they achieved a breakthrough. The lab thrummed with impossibly strong excitement as Novak inputted the final command sequence. The replica artifact pulsed with an otherworldly glow, and then a shimmering portal burst into existence, flooding the room with shimmering light. Cheers erupted from the exhausted scientists as telemetry data confirmed the portal's stability. They had done it, opened a gateway to another star system, light years from Earth. And as reports flooded in from across the globe, it became clear that this was just the beginning. The artifact's quantum resonance had activated thousands of dormant portals, spanning the breadth of the galaxy. Earth's military leaders wasted no time in mobilizing expeditionary forces to secure the newly accessible worlds. Grizzled Marine Captain Jake Remington found himself at the forefront of this galactic land grab, leading an elite team through a portal to a mineral-rich planet designated as a crucial resource hub by the architects. As Remington's boots hit the alien soil, he scanned his surroundings with a wary eye. 
Towering ruins loomed in the distance, their curved metallic spires glinting beneath the unfamiliar sun. The air hung heavy with the weight of untold millennia, and Remington couldn't shake the feeling that they were treading on hallowed ground. The team pushed forward, following the telemetry data to a vast mineral deposit nestled within a crumbling megastructure. Remington ran his hand over the iridescent ore, marveling at its otherworldly beauty. With these resources, Earth could construct the architect's advanced technologies and finally stand a chance against the Vulcan menace. But even as hope blossomed in Remington's chest, storm clouds gathered on the galactic horizon. On the bridge of his mighty warship, Vulcan Grand Admiral Zorax stared at the holographic star map with a mixture of disbelief and cruel calculation. The sudden activation of ancient portals across Vulcan space had thrown the Empire into chaos, but Zorax saw only opportunity. The wormholes represented a new frontier for conquest, a chance to expand Vulcan dominion to unprecedented heights. With ruthless efficiency, Zorax mobilized the full might of the Vulcan Armada. Legions of ships filled with weaponry poured through the portals, seeking to claim the connected worlds before the humans could establish a foothold. And so, the stage was set for a desperate struggle that would span galaxies and decide the fate of countless civilizations. As expeditionary forces from Earth and the Vulcan Empire clashed on far-flung worlds, Dr. Hicks and his team raced to uncover the secrets buried within the architect's megastructure. Deciphering the star maps, Hicks realized the true scope of the portal network, a web of wormholes connecting not just star systems, but entire galaxies. The architects had once spanned the cosmos, their influence stretching beyond the bounds of imagination. But as Hicks delved deeper into the ancient records, a chilling question began to form in his mind. What cataclysmic event had forced the hyper-advanced architects to abandon their portals and vanish from the universe? And could that same calamity now threaten humanity as they ventured out into the stars? As the expedition pushed onward, the answer to that question would prove to be the key to humanity's survival, or the harbinger of its ultimate doom. Dr. Eliza Singh's fingers danced across the holographic interface, fine-tuning the quantum matrix of the Vanguard's main weapon system. The cavernous shipyard hummed with activity as teams of engineers and scientists worked tirelessly to bring humanity's new fleet to life. Power output is holding steady at 97% efficiency, Singh reported a rare smile crossing her face. We've done it. Admiral Alexei Petrov nodded, his weathered features illuminated by the soft blue glow of the ship's systems coming online. Impressive work, Doctor. But will it be enough? Before Singh could respond, a priority alert flashed across the main view screen. Captain Nora Duran's face appeared, her expression grim. Admiral, we've got a situation on Epsilon 9, Duran said, her voice tight. We've uncovered... something. You need to see this. The transmission cut to a sweeping vista of alien ruins, their towering spires reaching toward a violet sky. As the camera panned, it revealed a massive scorch mark, seared into the planet's surface, visible even from orbit. My God, Petrov breathed, what could have done this? Duran's face reappeared, her eyes haunted. We found data crystals in the ruins. They're not architect tech. They belong to the civilization that lived here. And Admiral, they were wiped out by the architects. A heavy silence fell over the shipyard as the implications sank in. Singh's mind raced, connecting dots and formulating theories. We need to accelerate our research, she said. If the architects were capable of this level of destruction... Her words were cut short by another incoming transmission. General Krell's reptilian features filled the screen, his eyes gleaming with predatory intelligence. Greetings, humans, Krell hissed, his forked tongue flicking between razor-sharp teeth. I must commend you on your resourcefulness, but did you truly believe you could keep your technological advancements hidden from us? Petrov's teeth gritted. What do you want, Krell? The Vulcan general's lips curled into a cruel smile. Why, to level the playing field, of course. The transmission cut to a live feed of Vulcan strike teams pouring through portals, overwhelming human outposts on resource-rich worlds. You have something we want, Krell continued, and we intend to take it. The feed abruptly terminated, 
leaving the shipyard in stunned silence. Petrov turned to Singh, his eyes blazing with drive. Doctor, how soon can we have the vanguard ready for combat? Singh's fingers flew across the interface, running final diagnostics. Give me six hours. Petrov nodded grimly. You have four. Assemble a battle group. We're taking the fight to them. As the shipyard erupted into frenzied activity, Singh couldn't shake the feeling that they were hurtling toward a confrontation that would shape the fate of the galactic realm. The secrets of the architects, the threat of the Vulcans, and the mysteries of the portal network swirled in her mind like pieces of an impossible puzzle. Little did she know that the most crucial piece was yet to reveal itself, a message from deep within enemy territory that would change everything. The encrypted transmission crackled to life, its origin deep within Vulcan space. Admiral Petrov leaned forward, his weathered face illuminated by the holographic display. This is Odin, a distorted voice declared. I offer aid against our mutual enemy. Rendezvous at these coordinates. Petrov's eyes narrowed. It could be a trap. Dr. Singh shook her head. We're running out of options, Admiral. The Vulcan Empire grows stronger by the day. After a moment's hesitation, Petrov nodded. Plot a course, and may whatever gods are out there have mercy on us if we're wrong. The human fleet limped through the portal, emerging at a hidden rallying point near the Nexus. A formidable armada of sleek alien ships awaited them. At their center loomed a massive dreadnought, its hull adorned with strange, flowing script. A shuttle departed the flagship, docking with Petrov's command ship. The airlock hissed open, revealing a tall, lithe figure. As the being stepped into the light, Petrov's eyes widened in surprise. I am Valara, the female Vulcan declared, her voice a mix of silk and steel. Welcome to the Rebellion. In the briefing room, Valara's holographic display flickered to life, revealing the orbital shipyards above the Vulcan capital. Our target, she explained, the Empire's industrial heart. Lieutenant Tyler Maverick Collins studied the schematics, a grin spreading across his face. Those shipyards look mighty fragile. One good hit and... Precisely, Valara interrupted, which is why you'll be piloting these. The hologram shifted, displaying sleek fighters unlike anything the humans had seen before. Portal, drive equipped. You'll jump right into their backyard. Maverick whistled low. Now that's what I call an entrance. As the briefing concluded, Dr. Hicks approached Petrov. Admiral, while they conduct the assault, I'd like to take a team through another portal. We've detected an anomaly that could be the hub world at the center of the network. Petrov nodded. Approved. But be careful out there, Craig. We're in uncharted territory now. Hours later, Maverick strapped himself into the cockpit of his new fighter, marveling at the alien controls. All right, Rogue Squadron, he called over the comm. Let's show these Vulcans how we dance. The fighters streaked towards the shimmering portal, vanishing in a flash of light. They emerged in the Vulcan capital system, immediately met by a hail of enemy fire. Break formation, Maverick shouted, his fighter corkscrewing through space. Hit those shipyards with everything you've got. The battle raged, human and rebel pilots weaving through the orbital defenses. Maverick's targeting computer locked onto a massive fuel depot. Fox 2, he muttered, releasing a precursor disruptor bomb. The explosion blossomed in silence, tearing through the shipyard's main construction docks. Cheers erupted over the comm as the rebels pressed their advantage. Meanwhile, Dr. Hicks and his team piloted an experimental architect craft through another portal. They emerged in a vast, star-studded expanse, dominated by an impossible sight. My God, Hicks breathed staring at the massive ring construct before them. Thousands of inactive portal gates lined its circumference, each a window to a different corner of the universe. As Hicks interfaced with the station's systems, his eyes widened in shock. These records. The architects didn't build this for expansion. They were trying to escape something. Back at the shipyards, Admiral Zorax's face contorted with rage. Release the drones, he snarled. Destroy them all! A swarm of gravitic bomb-armed drones poured from the hangars, overwhelming the rebel fighters. Maverick's ship shuddered under their assault, alarms blaring. I'm hit, he called out. Systems failing. 
I've got to bail out. Maverick's escape pod hurtled towards the Vulcan capital's surface, the battle raging above him. As he touched down on the harsh desert plains, a shadow fell across his face. A female Vulcan stood before him, her eyes wary but not hostile. Come with me if you want to live, she said, extending her hand. I'm Ayana. As Maverick took her hand, alarms blared throughout the ring construct. Dr. Hicks watched in horror as thousands of Vulcan warships poured through the portals, led by General Krell's flagship. They've found us, Hicks whispered, his fingers flying over the alien controls. And they're coming for the heart of the network. Network. They're coming for the heart of the... A blinding flash cut off Hicks's words as the massive Imperial Vulcan armada poured through the portals. The ring construct shuddered under the onslaught, its outer defenses crumbling beneath a hail of energy weapons. All hands, battle stations, Hicks shouted, his fingers dancing across the alien controls. We need to protect the gateway systems at all costs. The expedition's few ships scrambled to intercept the Vulcan onslaught, but they were hopelessly outmatched. Energy beams lanced through space, vaporizing human vessels in brilliant explosions. Just as hope began to fade, a battered fleet of sleek ships emerged from another portal. Valara's voice crackled over the comm. Humans, form up on us. We'll buy you time to access those controls. Admiral Petrov's face was grim as he surveyed the tactical display. It won't be enough, he muttered. We need a miracle. On the harsh surface of the Vulcan capital, Maverick followed Ayana through winding tunnels carved into the bedrock. The air grew thick with the scent of ozone and sweat as they delved deeper into the hidden rebel base. How much further? Maverick whispered, his hand never leaving his sidearm. Ayana's eyes darted nervously. Just ahead, our contact should be... A tall male Vulcan stepped from the shadows, his features sharp in the dim light. I am Kalen, he said, his voice low and urgent. We must move quickly. Imperial forces have detected our presence. As if on cue, alarms blared through the tunnels. Kalen ushered them towards a concealed hangar where a small craft waited. This will get you off world, he explained, punching in launch codes. May fortune favor your journey. The ship's engines roared to life just as the first Imperial troops breached the outer defenses. Maverick gripped the controls, guiding the craft through a narrow fissure and into the planet's turbulent atmosphere. High above, in the fiery void surrounding the ring construct, Admiral Petrov watched as ship after ship fell to the relentless Vulcan assault. Dr. Hicks's voice crackled over the comm. Admiral, I need more time. The portal controls. There's something here, a power we've never seen before. Petrov's heart made. There was only one option left. All ships converge on my position, he ordered. We're punching through to the system's sun. A chorus of acknowledgments rang out as the battered fleet formed up. General Krell's voice boomed across all frequencies. Foolish humans, your defeat is inevitable. Surrender now and we may show mercy. Petrov's only response was to open fire, his ships surging forward in a desperate charge towards the artificial sun. The void erupted in chaos as Imperial reinforcements moved to intercept. Amidst the fury of battle, a small rebel craft emerged from the Vulcan atmosphere. Maverick's voice crackled over the comm. This is Rogue Leader. Anyone got room for two more? Maverick! Petrov exclaimed. Get your ass over here, son. We're making for the sun. As the Allied fleet engaged the Imperial dreadnoughts in a titanic clash, Dr. Hicks worked feverishly at the portal controls. Sweat beaded on his brow as he deciphered the ancient architect interface. There, he shouted triumphantly. Admiral, I'm opening a portal within the sun's corona. It's our only chance. The fabric of space-time warped and twisted as an impossible gateway materialized within the roiling stellar plasma. Petrov's voice rang out. All ships, make for that portal, now! The battered human and rebel ships dove for the shimmering gateway, imperial weapons fire nipping at their heels. In a blinding flash, they vanished into the unknown. As reality reasserted itself, gasps of awe filled the command deck. Before them stretched a breathtaking vista, 
a vast artificial sphere encompassing multiple stars, its inner surface a patchwork of environments and megastructures. Dr. Hicks's eyes widened as he interfaced with the local systems. This, this is incredible, he breathed. The architects built this to harness cosmic energies on an unimaginable scale. An admiral, I think I've found a way into their central database. Petrov nodded grimly. Do it, doctor. Whatever you find in there might be our last hope against the Empire. As Hicks delved into the ancient alien systems, the fleet took up defensive positions around the megasphere. They had bought themselves time, but the ultimate clash for control of the portal network and the hope of the universe was not nearly finished. Dr. Hicks's fingers flew across the alien interface, his eyes widening as he absorbed the staggering revelations within the architect's central database. Admiral, he called out, his voice tight with urgency. You need to see this. Petrov strode over, his weathered face illuminated by the holographic display. What am I looking at, doctor? The truth, Hicks breathed. The architects weren't expanding. They were running. The display shifted, showing a vast, roiling mass of energy devouring entire galaxies. The Omega Cloud, Hicks explained an unknowable force that periodically scours the universe of advanced civilizations. It activates and consumes the very technologies capable of stopping it. Petrov's eyes sharp. And the portals? An escape route, Hicks said, gesturing to the megasphere around them. This structure can generate an artificial subspace universe, a potential refuge from the cloud's destruction. As Hicks delved deeper into the database, alarms blared throughout the command center. Lieutenant Reeves's voice crackled over the comm. Admiral, Imperial forces incoming. They've followed us through the portal. Outside, the void erupted in chaos as Admiral Zorax's diminished but still formidable armada emerged from the stellar gateway. Maverick's voice cut through the din. This is Rogue Leader. We've got something that might even the odds. Ayana's sleek rebel craft streaked past the viewing port its hull shimmering with an strange, iridescent field. Experimental shielding tech, Maverick explained, courtesy of our new architect friends. Petrov nodded grimly. Get it to our engineers. We'll need every advantage we can get. As the human and rebel fleet scrambled to retrofit their ships, a new threat emerged. Captain Remington's voice echoed through the command center. Sir... We've got multiple hostile dropships breaching the outer habitation ring. General Krell's face appeared on the main view screen, his eyes glittering with malice. You've led us to quite the prize, Admiral, he sneered. I think I'll claim it for the Empire. The transmission cut off as Krell's assault team stormed through the Megasphere's corridors. Valara's rebel forces met them head on, the air filling with the acrid smell of ozone and the staccato of energy weapons. Remington! Petrov barked. Take a team and reinforce Valara's position. We can't let them reach the control center. As the battle raged through the Megasphere's vast habitation rings, Maverick's voice crackled over the comm once more. This is Rogue Leader. I've got an idea, but it's going to get messy. Ayana's voice joined his. We're rigging Maverick's fighter with guided munitions. If we can take out those Imperial dropships, we might just turn the tide. Petrov hesitated for a moment, then nodded. Do it. The damaged fighter streaked across the Megasphere's surface, its targeting systems locking onto the Imperial landing zones. Maverick's hands danced across the controls, guiding the craft on its final run. Fox 3, he muttered, releasing a barrage of missiles that blossomed into fiery destruction. The Imperial dropships erupted in flames, their reinforcements cut off. As Maverick's crippled fighter plummeted towards the surface, Zorax's enraged voice boomed across all frequencies. You leave me no choice. All ships, commence orbital bombardment, wipe them from existence. The Megasphere shuddered under the Imperial onslaught, its outer defenses buckling. Hicks's eyes darted across the control interface, searching for a solution. There, he shouted, his fingers flying across the alien controls. Activating repulsor shields. Massive energy fields sprang to life, deflecting Zorax's orbital barrage. Entire habitation rings went dark as power was rerouted to the shields. 
In the chaos, Valara cornered Krell and his remaining warriors, her eyes blazing with vengeance. For all those you've slaughtered, she snarled, raising her weapon. Stand down, Remington's voice rang out as human marines surrounded the group. We take prisoners, Valara. That's how we're different from them. The tense standoff stretched for an agonizing moment before Valara lowered her weapon, her expression resolute in almost unchecked rage. As the battle raged on, the Megasphere's cosmic reactors began to destabilize, their energy output fluctuating wildly. Hicks's eyes widened as he realized the implications. We don't have much time, he called out, but I think I've found our way out. What do you mean? Dr. Singh demanded, her face etched with concern. Hicks's fingers danced across the controls, redirecting the reactor's output. A slipstream wormhole, he explained, leading directly to the artificial subspace universe. It's our only chance. Singh's eyes widened in shock. Craig, we can't. We don't know what's on the other side. We know what's coming if we stay, Hicks replied grimly. Admiral, we need to evacuate. Now. Petrov nodded, his voice ringing out across all channels. All ships, make for the subspace portal. This is not a drill. As the combined human and rebel fleet surged towards the shimmering gateway, the megasphere began to fracture around them. Imperial ships gave chase, but it was too late. One by one, the Allied vessels slipped through the portal's event horizon, leaving the doomed megasphere behind. A blinding flash erupted as the structure finally gave way, engulfing the pursuing Imperial fleet. When Vision returned, the survivors found themselves in a realm beyond imagination. An artificial universe stretched out before them, crafted by the architects as humanity's last hope against the approaching Omega Cloud. Hicks gazed out at the new frontier, his mind turning with the weight of their discovery. The final conflict with the Vulcans would continue here, across higher dimensions, as humanity's destiny merged with that of the ancient portal builders. Well, Maverick's voice broke the awed silence, I guess we're not in Kansas anymore. The shimmering portal closed behind the last allied vessel, leaving them adrift in a realm beyond imagination. Before them stretched an artificial universe crafted by the architects, humanity's refuge against the approaching Omega Cloud. Admiral Petrov's voice crackled over the comms. All ships, report status. As damage reports flooded in, Dr. Hicks's eyes widened at the sight before them. A massive ring-world construct dominated the impossible horizon, its surface a patchwork of environments and megastructures. My God, he breathed, they built all this as a backup plan. Humanoid robotic drones approached the fleet, their metallic forms gleaming in the light of an artificial sun. One drone interfaced with the command ship systems, its synthesized voice echoing through the bridge. Welcome, refugees. Basic resources and amenities have been prepared for your arrival. Within hours, the human and rebel forces had established a fortified base on the ring world surface. Admiral Petrov stood at the center of a hastily assembled command post, surveying holographic readouts of their new home. We need to secure our position, he declared. Valara, your rebels know guerrilla tactics. I want you overseeing our perimeter defenses. The rebel warlord's eyes narrowed. And who put you in charge, human? The fact that we control vital architect tech, Petrov replied coolly. For now, we work together or we die separately. Valara held his gaze for a long moment before nodding curtly. Fine. But this isn't over. As she strode away, Dr. Singh approached, her face etched with purpose. Admiral, I have a proposal. We could use the Ringworld's facilities to research methods of breaching back into normal space-time. If we succeed, we might strike a decisive blow against the Imperial forces. Dr. Hicks frowned. It's not that simple, Amrita. This subspace universe may follow entirely different physical laws. We'd be starting from scratch. Then we start from scratch, Singh replied. What choice do we have? Across the dimensional divide, Admiral Zorax paced the bridge of his dreadnought, his eyes wild with terrifying fury. Before him, a holographic display showed the cosmic debris field where the megasphere had once stood. They're out there, he snarled. Those humans have accessed some kind of godlike power. I can feel it. Behind him, 
General Krell stood flanked by Imperial guards, his hands bound. You're delusional, Zorax. The humans are dead, along with your chances of promotion. Zorax whirled, backhanding the Vulcan across the face. Silence. I will find them, and when I do, the secrets of the architects will belong to the Empire. In the medical bay of the human rebel outpost, Maverick winced as a medic tended to his injuries. The daring fighter attack that destabilized the Megasphere's reactors had taken its toll. You're lucky to be alive, a soft voice said. Maverick looked up to see a young Vulcan woman watching him intently. Myra, he said, recognizing Valara's daughter. I didn't expect to see you here. She shrugged, a ghost of a smile playing across her lips. Someone has to keep an eye on you reckless humans. As they talked, an unexpected warmth blossomed between them, transcending the divide between their peoples. In a secluded chamber, Ayana sat cross-legged before a pulsing architect interface. Her eyes were closed, brow furrowed in concentration. Suddenly, her eyes snapped open, glowing with an otherworldly light. Images flooded her mind, entire civilizations rising and falling, consumed by an unstoppable tide of energy. The Omega Cloud, devouring galaxies across vast stretches of time and space. She gasped, breaking the connection. Dr. Hicks, she called out, her voice shaking. I've seen it. The cloud. It's, it's coming. Hicks and Singh worked tirelessly, decoding the Ringworld systems. As they delved deeper into the architect database, a heavily encrypted file caught their attention. What is this? Singh muttered her fingers flying across the alien interface. The file opened, revealing schematics of mind-boggling complexity. Hicks's eyes widened as he absorbed the implications. It's some kind of doomsday weapon, he breathed, the Andromeda contingency, a way to collapse space-time from multiple dimensions, permanently altering the cloud's path of destruction. Singh's face paled. But the cost... Entire galaxies, Hicks finished grimly trillions of lives. As they grappled with the weight of their discovery, alarms blared throughout the outpost. Lieutenant Reeves's voice rang out, Energy signatures detected! Imperial forces incoming! Admiral Zorax's face appeared on the main view screen, his eyes gleaming with triumph. Did you think you could hide forever? Your stolen power ends now. The subspace universe trembled as the Imperial Armada breached the dimensional barrier. Two fleets faced each other across an impossible gulf, one desperate to survive, the other consumed by the promise of ultimate power. In the command center, Hicks, Maverick, and Ayana exchanged grim looks. The choice before them was clear. Risk everything on an untested doomsday weapon or face annihilation at the hands of the Empire. As the first salvos of energy weapons lit up the artificial sky, humanity's last stand began in earnest. The artificial sky above the ring world blazed with weapons fire as Zorax's Imperial Armada breached the dimensional barrier. Admiral Petrov's voice cut through the chaos of the command center. All ships, defensive positions, protect the ring world at all costs. Dr. Hicks and Dr. Singh huddled over a holographic display, their faces illuminated by the pulsing glow of encrypted architect data. We've cracked it, Singh whispered, her eyes wide. The Andromeda Contingency. Hicks nodded grimly. A weapon to end all weapons, but the cost. Their conversation was interrupted by a thunderous explosion that rocked the entire facility. Lieutenant Reeves's voice crackled over the comms. Sir, we've got multiple breaches. Vulcan boarding parties are swarming the habitation zones. Across the ring world's vast surface, Maverick and Ayana led a desperate counteroffensive against Krell's forces. The air filled with the acrid smell of ozone as energy weapons discharged, leaving scorch marks on the alien architecture. Ayana, on your six, Maverick shouted, diving for cover as a Vulcan disruptor blast seared the air where he had stood moments before. The scion spun, her eyes glowing with otherworldly power, as she unleashed a telekinetic shockwave that sent the enemy troops flying. In the vacuum of space, Admiral Petrov's remaining ships Engage Krell's renegade warship. The subspace battlefield lit up with streaks of weapons fire and explosions that seemed to bend the very fabric of reality. Damage report, Petrov barked, 
gripping the arms of his command chair as another volley rocked the ship. Shields at 30%, sir, his tactical officer responded. We can't take much more of this. Back in the research command, Hicks's fingers flew across the alien interface, inputting the final calculations for the Andromeda contingency. The weight of trillions of lives pressed down on him as he worked. Craig, Singh said softly, placing a hand on his shoulder. Are we really considering this? The casualties... Before Hicks could respond, a new alarm blared through the facility. On the main view screen, they watched in horror as Zorax's dreadnoughts unleashed a devastating barrage against the Ringworld's inner hub. They're targeting the cosmic reactors, Singh gasped. If they destabilize, the subspace rift will collapse. Time seemed to slow as Hicks stared at the activation sequence for the contingency. His finger hovered over the final command, trembling with the magnitude of the choice before him. In that moment, Myra burst into the room, her eyes wide with a mix of fear and purpose. Wait, she cried out. There has to be another way. As the battle raged around them and the very fabric of their refuge began to unravel, Hicks looked from Myra to Singh, then back to the pulsing architect interface. The fate of not just humanity, but countless civilizations across multiple dimensions, hung in the balance of his next decision. Hicks's finger trembled over the activation sequence. The weight of trillions of lives pressed down on him, threatening to crush his tenacity. We have to do something, Petrov's voice boomed through the command center. That weapon may be our only chance. Valara's eyes blazed with fury. You'd sacrifice entire galaxies on a gamble? There must be another way. Before Hicks could respond, the facility rocked violently. Zorax's dreadnoughts unleashed a devastating barrage against the Ringworld's inner hub. Alarms blared as systems overloaded. The cosmic reactors are destabilizing, Singh cried out, her fingers flying across holographic displays. We're losing containment of the subspace rift. Outside, chaos engulfed the Ringworld's surface. General Krell's warship bombarded the human rebel outpost with relentless fury. Energy beams sliced through makeshift defenses, vaporizing entire sections. Maverick ducked behind a crumbling wall, pulling Ayana down as disruptor fire seared the air above them. We can't hold this position, he shouted over the din of battle. Ayana's eyes glowed with psychic energy as she deflected an incoming barrage. Where's Myra? she called back. Their answer came in a heart-wrenching cry. Myra stood exposed, desperately trying to drag a wounded comrade to safety. A Vulcan boarding party converged on her position. No! Maverick surged forward, but it was too late. Myra vanished in a shimmer of transporter energy, along with a dozen other captured rebels. Aboard the Imperial flagship, Zorax's eyes gleamed with madness. He paced the bridge surrounded by the bodies of officers he deemed disloyal. Set course for the ring world, he snarled. I will have the architect's power at any expense. Back in the research command, Hicks' mind raced. The Andromeda contingency pulsed before him, a Pandora's box of unimaginable destruction. And yet... Wait, he muttered, scanning through architect data. This triggering sequence, it requires a second power source. Singh leaned in, her eyes widening. An identical construct, but where? It has to be in normal space-time, Hicks finished. We need to find it. Maverick's voice crackled over the comms, thick with static. We're overrun, requesting immediate evac. Hicks made a split-second decision. Maverick, listen carefully. There's another architect megastructure out there. We need its coordinates to activate the contingency. Are you insane? Ayana's voice cut in. How are we supposed to... Just do it, Hicks shouted. It's our only chance. In a blur of desperate action, Maverick and Ayana fought their way to a rebel scout craft. Alarms blared as the subspace rift began to collapse around them. Punching it, Maverick called out, ramming the throttle forward. The scout craft streaked towards the crumbling dimensional boundary, phasing through just as it sealed shut behind them. They emerged in an uncharted galaxy, sensors immediately pinging with faint energy signatures. Following the trail, they discovered an ancient megastructure that perfectly mirrored the subspace ringworld. 
There! Ayana pointed to a dormant hyperspatial array. That has to be it. Maverick's fingers danced across the controls, transmitting the coordinates back to Hicks. We've found it, but we've got company. Imperial hunters converged on their position, weapons charging. In the subspace realm, Hicks received the transmission. He locked eyes with Singh, both understanding the magnitude of what came next. Do it, Singh whispered. Hicks activated the Andromeda contingency. The cosmic reactors of both megastructures hummed in perfect resonance across the dimensional divide. Hyperspatial warheads detonated at key intersection points, tearing apart the very fabric of reality. A wave of space-time distortion erupted outward, engulfing everything in its path. The material universe twisted and reshaped itself, physical laws rewritten on a fundamental level. Maverick pushed his craft to its limits, the trans-dimensional vortex howling at their heels. Just as it seemed all hope was lost, they were swallowed by the maelstrom of cosmic energy. Only to emerge in a newborn universe, forever changed by the Andromeda contingency. From the Ringworld Enclave, humanity gazed out at a reshaped cosmos. The Vulcan Empire, the Omega Cloud, all had been wiped from existence. An unimaginable price had been paid, but a second chance at universal rebirth now lay before them. Hicks stood at the command center's viewport, his expression a mix of awe and unshakable focus. The architect's technology hummed around him, a reminder of the power now at humanity's fingertips. We've been given a clean slate, he murmured. This time, we do it right. Years passed, and humanity spread across the stars, rebuilding from the ashes of cosmic upheaval. On the capital colony of Novum, Admiral Petrov stood before a holographic display of newly charted systems, his weathered face illuminated by the soft blue glow. Another successful colonization, sir, reported his aide. The serious outpost is now fully operational. Petrov nodded, a hint of pride in his eyes. Good, we're making progress. In his private laboratory, Dr. Hicks pored over architect data, his fingers flying across alien interfaces. The weight of hidden knowledge pressed down on him, a burden he carried alone. As he decrypted another file, his eyes widened. No, he whispered, it can't be. The lab door hissed open and Dr. Singh entered. Craig, what is it? Hicks looked up, his face pale. The contingency, it wasn't what we thought. The architects, they... A distant explosion rocked the facility. Alarms blared as the lights flickered and died, plunging them into darkness. What's happening? Singh shouted over the chaos. Before Hicks could respond, the emergency lights kicked in, bathing the lab in an eerie red glow. The intercom crackled to life with Admiral Petrov's voice, tight with urgency. All personnel, this is not a drill. We are under attack by unknown forces. Implement security protocol Omega-7 immediately. In the corridors of the research wing, shadows moved with lethal purpose. Colonel Tirgov's assassins advanced, their cybernetic enhancements gleaming in the dim light. They had one target, Dr. Hicks and his team. Across the colony, chaos erupted. Cyber attacks crippled communication networks and defense grids. In the central spaceport, Admiral Petrov barked orders as his loyalists scrambled to mount a defense. Get those shields up, he roared, and someone find my daughter. But Nadia Petrov was already gone. In a nondescript freighter at the edge of the system, she gripped the arms of her chair as her husband, Vance, pushed the engines to their limits. We've got company, Vance growled, his eyes fixed on the sensor readouts. Looks like Tirgov's goons found us. Nadia's hand instinctively went to her sidearm. How many? Before Vance could answer, the ship shuddered violently. Warning klaxons blared as the hull integrity alarms screamed to life. They're boarding us, Vance shouted, abandoning the pilot's seat and drawing his weapon. We need to... The airlock exploded inward in a shower of sparks and twisted metal. Through the smoke stepped a nightmarish figure, more machine than man. General Krell, reborn in a patchwork of cybernetic enhancements and architect tech. Did you really think you could escape? Krell's voice was a metallic rasp, his one organic eye gleaming with hate. 
As Vance and Nadia prepared for a desperate last stand, a transmission crackled through their ship's comms. It was Admiral Petrov, his voice strained but determined. To all loyal forces, fall back to Earth. We have no choice but to activate the failsafe. May God forgive us. In that moment, as humanity teetered on the brink of civil war and cosmic revelation, the true scope of their predicament began to unfold. The cycle of creation and destruction, manipulated by forces beyond their comprehension, had only just begun to reveal its terrifying design. You have reached the end of the story. If you enjoyed this story and want to support us, please leave a like and subscribe to our channel. And for every comment that says 88, I will heart every single one of them. Thank you for your time.